Let me tell you the story of the artist. An artist will spend minutes, hours, weeks, and months creating a piece of work just to never release it. An artist will compare themselves to the successes of others, typically in the form of self-doubt, not because they are jealous and envious people, but rather because they just want others to see the beauty in what they created. I'll probably end up like putting this up on the screen anyways, but... Being a photographer is just that. Sometimes the stars line up, and other times they come falling down. And today, I want to show you a perfect example of them falling down. You see, I never released this video, mainly because I felt like all my photos sucked. But I'm realizing now, days like this are necessary in the journey of an artist. Sour days are inevitable and much needed in order to really appreciate the days that are sweet. And once you realize this, you'll be confident enough to say you're an artist. All right, so we drove about two and a half hours to a town here called Carmel by the Sea. Uh, famously known for its fairy tale like cottages that seem to be scattered all across literally the entire town. So, for the last maybe seven to eight months, I have been hitting the street photography really hard for my upcoming project and just traveling to different cities around the country. And it just kind of taken a toll on me. It started to feel very repetitive and, you know, extremely fast paced. But to be honest, I think one of the things that I find a little silly is. In a world where things are moving so quick, I'm finding that I'm trying to slow things down. That's exactly why I'm out here today in the first place. I think my life is moving a little too fast right now. I think everything's kind of just going boom, 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 left and right. But I don't really have a second to take in a beautiful view, maybe think of a composition, pre-visualize it, and then use the tools that I have to turn it into a photograph. And if I really think about why I fell in love with photography in the first place, it was the joy of kind of going through that process. So here is the game plan. I'm gonna load up all of my cameras, get them ready to go because this is gonna be a run and gun, one and done type of show. I brought a couple of different cameras and so I'm gonna show you guys a little bit about how I use them, work them to make the photographs that I do. Enough of all this, you guys. I'm just very happy to be out here today and uh, let's load up the film. I mentioned this a little bit earlier on. We do have a couple of different cameras today. First thing we have here, of course, is my Pentax X7. I have the 105 2.4 on it. I think this is one of my favorite lenses for this camera system right here. And of course, I can't go without the 55 F4. I also have this camera right here. This is a fun little new camera I picked up recently, the Horizon 202. It's a panoramic camera. I'll talk a little bit more about this camera a little bit later on here. And if duty calls, I also brought this Olympus XA. Take a train right just to see. Okay, so the composition that I'm envisioning here has to do a lot with this beautiful brick pathway. Uh, kind of like a leading line moving over into like the left side of the frame here. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duck low. I'm gonna try to get some of this tree here in the foreground. So with portrait, I think it's gonna make this really nice and warm. And again, if we meter correctly here for the mid-tones, we are still at 1 8th at 1 1 25th. So I'm gonna try that out first. Maybe I need to get a little bit further back here and duck it even lower. It's gorgeous, okay. Here we go. And one, two, and three. Cause I did the same just for you. Beautiful. We don't know how. I always try to see if I can work it out, you know, in different different angles. Maybe I go to the right more, focus in on this part here, frame it up. Eh. Probably could be a little bit different. I'm not sure if I'm satisfied with that. I wonder how this would look with the 55 millimeter lens. Let me try that out first. Beautiful. And we could try the same thing, F8125. Let's see our metering. Oh yeah, way better. In terms of composition, now it's starting to look like a movie scene here. So here we go. Three, two, one. 
Steel Cannon. One. Gorgeous. Hey, how's it going? Good. <laughs> oh yeah, it's beautiful out here. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I think the 55 worked. Hopefully that looked a little bit better. I don't know. When it comes to figuring out what tool is best for the scene. Like I said, this is the fun of photography, right? You, you kind of get to slow down a little bit, think a little bit, be more intentional with your frame. And with the 55, I think it gave a little bit more character in terms of like the details of the house, the color of the tree, maybe even that walkway. But when you zoom it out with the 28 equivalent at 55, uh, you, you then start to see kind of just the magic of how unordinary these houses look. And it's just gorgeous. It is gorgeous to see. The best part is there's a ton of houses around here to try and photograph. So I'm going to move on. I think I'm going to keep the 55 on here, though. I think that was definitely the right call. But who knows? Maybe we'll switch back. So the 6.7 is down. We are about to go and grab the Horizon. Because who doesn't love a good 35 millimeter panoramic photograph? A true panoramic, which is awesome. So oh, I've always wanted to shoot panoramics. <laughs> From a lower angle, I think this is going to be interesting. Three, two, one. Oh boy, I forgot to change the, the switch. That's terrible. Okay, let me let me do that again because I forgot to change the switch. Now we're in business. Three, two, and one. Hopefully that turned out well. Now here's something interesting about this camera. When you photograph with this, you need to make sure your fingers aren't at the front like this, like how you would typically hold a camera. Because this is a swing lens camera, anything that's here on this side, like a 180 degree view, it's uh, gonna kind of peek into the frame. So you have to photograph with this camera, kind of like this, where no fingers are in front, otherwise it's going to capture it. So I'm really happy with that one. I'm really hoping that it came out well. You guys will know before me though, that for sure. All right guys, so needless to say, this one is absolutely gorgeous. So many little details. This is called the Storybook Cottage. Wow, okay, let me see what I could do here. I'm thinking of utilizing this kind of green, almost leading line of a pathway. Oh, that looks really good actually. But you know what? We need a wider lens for this one. We need a much wider lens for this one. Back to the 55, okay. On goes the 55. F8126 again. Let's see, much better. So there's some like trash cans on the side I don't really want to get into the frame. Hmm. Maybe we'll have to get the trash cans in the frame. Three, two, one. Hmm. Gorgeous. Oh, there's another one right behind us. That's gorgeous too. I think that calls for a pano. Okay, so the one right across from us, let me see if I can get a nice little reading here. So check this out, you guys. This is the Kex light meter. It's supposed to be like mounted to the top of a cold shoe or hot shoe, but personally, I like to just take it around with me and use it as a spot meter or incident meter. So you basically just input the settings here. I have it at F8. I don't know if you guys could see that, man. That is extremely dark, but I have it at F8, 1, 1 25th, And that is going to be the reading here. How about for mid-tone? 1 2 50th is what I'm getting. Okay. This one's gonna be tricky because we need to get this nice and centered. Three, two, and one. Hopefully that turned out. Let's take one of this here. And I'll tell you what, I don't like to make photographs of things that are a little bit more fine, fine detail, fine art, I don't know. But there's this really nice layer bed of this green foliage and then like one little prickly branch of kind of like an orange looking thing here. So I kind of want to isolate that and see how that looks in a photograph. So I'm going to take a photograph of this here. Uh, we'll shoot this at like F8. And then we're going to go to 1 60th of a second. Get nice and close. Get all of that real good detail here. All right, here we go. In three, two, and I want to go to F11. Yeah, so we can get more of a depth of field. God knows. Here we go. Three, two. 
Okay. Well, let's see how that turns out. I don't know. Did it turn out? Before we continue on, let me take a second to talk about our sponsor for this episode, which is Squarespace. Squarespace is your all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Now you guys know I've been using Squarespace for years and it was necessary for me when starting out as a photographer to create my own website. Squarespace has a ton of award-winning templates along with their drag and drop interface, making the website is seamless. You have dedicated pages for a portfolio, a gallery, an e-commerce shop, and one of the newer features that I'm starting to implement is the appointment scheduling tab. This allows clients to see time slots you have available and book you directly. If you don't have a photography website yet, today is the day you make one. Head over to squarespace.com slash kingjapes and enter promo code kingjapes at checkout and you guys can get 10% off of your first purchase of a domain or a website. Huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this episode. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this has got to be one of the most beautiful houses I've seen all day. Something about like that wood, the color, everything about it from the brick on the ground. You know, let's, let's try to get this in here. How do we photograph this though? I don't want to step onto their property, so I'm going to go here vertically. No, not vertically. What if we went this way? Okay, that's the composition, but there's a car coming. So. I, I found this composition right here to be actually really nice. So three, two, one. Oh, you know, it'd be crazy if we can use this kind of like a leading line over into that right there. It would have to be here. Okay, that's gorgeous too, but there's a lot of power lines. So I'm going to try to get that out of the frame. Three, two. One. That is beautiful. Ooh, baby Jesus, I think we found one of my favorite looking houses here today. Oh my goodness. What does this look like with a 28 millimeter lens? That looks ridiculously gorgeous. Okay, so I like the idea of photographing this wide angle, but I think I want to put on the 105 to accentuate some of the details from this place because the light is just right. Let's just try this out here first and foremost. Three, two, and one. And you know what? That's the roll. I'm gonna switch back over to the 105 millimeter lens. I think that just gave me a little bit better detail. So I have another roll of Portra 400 here. Yeah, I'm not really seeing the composition here, but I am gonna take a panoramic photo because why not, right? Okay, let's see what my reading is here. Okay, this is giving me one, one one hundredth of a second. So I can shoot the scene at f8, one one twenty fifth. And that should be good light. All right, here we go. One, two, three. It's gorgeous. Okay, so this is this is a rather busy street right here. Uh, <laughs> but you know what? I really like the way this building looks. Plus, that sun is peeking right over those two little two little peaks. So let me see. Let me try to expose here for that shadow area. I'm go 5.6 at 1 125th. Oh, let's go 1 60th. Beautiful. And we're gonna have that sun peeking just behind it. Here we go in three, two, one. See how that turns out here. Let me cross the street. Now get ran over. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have made it to the beach. Wow, this is really, really beautiful. I know you guys can't see it from where I'm at right now, but the sand here is white. It is extremely white. The color of the water looks teal. Am I in California or am I in Hawaii right now? I don't know. But you know what? Let me make a photograph here with my panoramic camera. So I'm going to go F8, 1125th. All right, let's see how that goes. Whew. 
Whew. So the real star of the show is actually behind us, but I ran out of film in my 6.7, so I gotta go load that up real quick here. So across the street from where I had parked, there's this gorgeous house with all of these herbs and I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but I'm going to make a picture of it. Let's put this on a tripod because I think now that the light is starting to become a little bit more scarce, uh, we are shooting Kodak Gold 200, of course. I'm going to have to use a slower shutter speed and that's just the nature of trying to get a very deep depth of field so we can get everything across the frame in focus as well as just not having enough light available. So it's telling me 1 60th is the correct, but I'm going to bring this down to like 1 15th. I think that's what it's gonna look best in. Go ahead and pop this off real quick here. And now we are looking at this top down, so. So this is what we are currently looking at for composition. That is what it looks like. We are gonna go in three, two, one. Hope that turned out good. On goes the 55. I'm really excited for this one. I, I think with a wider angle lens, I'm able to capture just a little bit more of this environment. Oh, that is very wide actually. You know, it's so wide that I might need to stand in the middle of the street for this photo. the street here show off like the little details yeah this is a much better composition now you can see kind of like the edges of it I think it looks great all right here we go in three two one got it that's gorgeous hopefully it turned out well with that frame, one of the challenges, of course, if we got the horizon straight, I think that's like probably the toughest thing to do with a waist level finder like this on the 6.7. Secondly, we expose more for the shadow. So rather than the mid-tones, I figured everything in the background here, there's not really much highlight going on. It's just like a cloudy sky. So I figured, you know what, let's just go ahead and expose for the shadows. If those highlights blow out, we'll pull it back in post. It's that simple. <laughs> that was actually really, really beautiful. Now, you know what? My battery on my camera, you guys, uh, is starting to die. I have one more battery left, but I want to save it till sunset and dusk because that's, I think, where we're going to make one of our better photographs. So I'm going to go scout out another composition. I think I might work towards more on the beach. I'm going to leave this on the tripod, though, and then let's see if we can find anything else that would be of interest for us to document and capture. Uh, because so far, you guys, this has been worth every mile you know that we've driven out to super fun like this channel right here there's a nice little uh yeah like a little channel that water's kind of running into creates a nice little subframe leading line direct your eyes straight to the sun why i don't know that's life right we all like the sun oh and there's a bird so for this type of scene i'm actually metering for the rocks in front mainly because i know that the the film that i'm shooting portrait 400 it can handle highlight retention so uh, even if I blow it out just a little bit, I can drop that back down and just get really nice color out of it. So I'm going to start off here and uh, we are at F8, 1 60th of a second. That seems to do the trick. I'm going to go a little bit lower here on the horizon, get that sun nice and high, get some of this nice foreground. Three, two, one, boom. Okay. 
think that was pretty good. I hope it was good. Shoot, we were jumping over rocks. Oh my goodness, it's a dead seal. Holy shit. That's disgusting. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, it seems like this is going to be nearing the end here. Uh, while we wait for this sun to drop a little bit more, get nice colors out, I just want to say thank you. Thank you guys for spending this day with me and coming out to photograph Carmel by the Sea. I think it was a very fun time. Definitely the break that I needed from the hustle and bustle of trying to make a body of work. And you know, when you ever get tired in life, you feel like everything is just crashing down on you and the pressure on your shoulders is just too strong. Allow yourself to come out to beautiful scenes like this, whether that be with your friends or by yourself. Huh, there's fighter jets in the air, that's weird. Come out here and just let the earth heal your soul. Uh, it sounds like some hippie, jippity stuff, but I can't tell you just how valuable this time has been, even if it was just for half a day. Uh, to be able to come out here and make these photographs. So I'm gonna try to finish up strong here, hopefully get something good, something usable on the Pentax 6 7 There's a ton of seals out there, look at that. Oh, 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 oh. Do I risk it? Ah, of course I do. Okay, here we go. This could be really bad. Whatever, full send. Ah, he hesitated, that's a, that's a bad sign. If you hesitate, that's a bad sign. Let's just go the easier route. Woo! I love my life and you should love yours too. Why? Hey, you're breathing. You get to come to places like this. The earth is beautiful. The earth is a gorgeous place. <sighs> All right, gang. This is it right here, man. This is the end of the video. I love you guys. Please take care of yourselves. Drink lots of water. Hug your mother. Hug your father. Hug your parents. And I'll see you guys soon.